here. Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, Welcome to the chat wheel, everybody. It is our first live streamed episode. We're pretty excited here, kind of. A little nervous. Not really. Are you nervous, Mason? I peed a little. Oh, <laughs> that's true. I get that. Oh, it God. happens. Wait, hold on. I have a serious question. Where do you put yeah. your headphones? Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's a good call. They're in ear headphones. Oh, okay. They're in nice <laughs> ones. Do you have to put those on before you... Uh... Yes, I do. Uh, okay. Yep. Who okay. Needs... There is a system that I have to go through before it has an order <laughs> oh, and it, God. it comes together. Check and the purpose. <laughs> Who needs headphones when you have magic friends? Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so... Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, let's do some introductions here. Greg, what is it, Blair? How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm pretty good. What I'm you been up to? Good. I think. Uh, not really. You know, I've been playing. I've been playing a lot, a lot, a lot of Dota lately, which is more than what I usually do, which is only sometimes play Dota. But I'm playing a lot in an effort to uh, become better. It's uh, yeah. marginally working. I don't know. I've gotten like pretty good, but. You know, sometimes you're just in a rut when you play Dota, and it gets really frustrating. So I'm in a, I'm in the rut right now. So, but I've won. You know, I've improved a lot lately, so I'm happy. I'm glad someone's improving. I haven't. <laughs> God knows hey. you haven't. Hey Mason, how are you doing? Hey you Darius, how are you? <laughs> oh, I'm fine. I'm so glad that you played didn't cla crash in the ocean. I, <laughs> I know you guys were really rooting for me the whole way home. Yep, I am back in the states, back home, and. I am very, very happy to be back. You know, it was it was a great semester over in England, but it's it's nice to be back in some familiar ground. Well, good to hear. Good to hear you're back. I've been, you know what's funny is like Mason has not been on any other time zone except Eastern the entire time. Yeah. It's like <laughs> no, I really haven't. I I went to bed at like five six o'clock in the morning every <laughs> single night over there because I just refused to become unjet lagged. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm proud of you. Patriotic all the way. It, it was a life choice. <laughs> it it took commitment, and uh, I rose to the challenge, I think. And this week's ga guest, the man, the myth, the beard, the legend, Coddle Guy. Oh, my fucking man, God. Man, those eyebrows. Are just <laughs> those eyebrows. How's it's it going? How's it going? Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to get some sort of recognition around here, but uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Life stealer guy was taken, so we went with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what so. What made you choose Coddle as your yeah, that's as your, your well? Is to he, be, what, do you, what do you love about him? <laughs> to be perfectly honest, yes, Coddle is indeed my favorite favorite hero in Dota, and I did play him religiously. And a lot, you can check my Dota buff and everything. He's my number one. <laughs> but uh, it's a funny story. On my old previous stream way back in the day, I was invited by uh, Warner Brother, some sort of Warner Brother game to be a part of the Guardians of Middle Earth MOBA and promote that. <laughs> Man, that game was atrociously shit. But I got a free <laughs> beard and wig out of it because you had to stream with the attire on. Oh, that was my. part of the shtick. Oh, wow. I was so pretty much actually... the only man to do this. So this is actually a legit reason you have this on originally. And it just happened that after I was done, I was so, like, morally broken down from how terrible the game was. <laughs> Me and my friend Johnny Walker went on a trip, and I was like, I'm just going to fucking play some Dota 2. <laughs> that's Coddle. War the get up, and that's pretty much how the story goes. Me and Jack Daniels have a similar relationship actually <laughs> yeah. he's like this is a good idea this is good you should do this <laughs> it's like I, I don't know johnny trust me kid we're going places <laughs> You're gonna go you know somewhere. what i remember that post too because you posted uh no it wasn't you that posted it was someone else that posted mm -hmm. hey there's this dude playing his coddle and he's drunk <laughs> off his ass and it's hilarious yeah. i was asleep at the time but it got a lot of recognition i think that's what started propelling you towards greatness I, I watched mean, it. it it was amazing not even good i'm not even a good player but just uh the people were like this guy is going for it i guess why not right we'll support you're old him. you don't have to be good <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm probably past my gaming prime about now i was pretty good back in dota one but now I'm pretty terrible but that's okay so what did so exactly like what's your past history in gaming just so people can get to know you a little bit better I'm sorry, what's my what during gaming? Past history in gaming. Oh, like, oh yes. up, he's old. Oh, I can't uh, that's true. <laughs> no, um, 
Well, like, I'm, you know, old time. I was definitely in it since the beginning. I got Warcraft 2, and then I got Warcraft 3, you know, and then I saw the rise of Aeon. Aeon's a strike before he became Dota, and then it was taken over. Then you got the Gwinso and Pendragon were coming in. I played it all through there. At the one point, I was in the in-house league. I was playing in games along with Merlini. No one would know who I am now. They'd be like, you were just that terrible guy in the game. Yeah, that's, that's neat. Did you, now, did you have, like, a moniker? back then that like people would have known you by no definitely not definitely right. not just like anyone else you know you got the name like xx renegade xx you know it's like who XX the hell's that guy Slayer, yeah double x's goku 31 whatever it may be you know so back then it was just kind of anyone else so i just like playing the game like anyone else would just playing the game and then i would do a little artistic work here and there i work with like dxd very briefly and did up their forums and you know, it was just very off and on and then stepped off had some real life school to do at that point in time, and then uh, jumped into a little bit of Dota 2. I did play Han. I am Han Crash. Oh I did play. Oh, I know. God I know. I played There's the Han. There's so damn many of you. It's Drop just, him from at the, call. the time. You gotta look like this. At the time, there was the people who were committed to sticking with Dota 1, and then you saw this new game come out, and the graphically was just so pleasing, and you're like, oh, it's it's Dota, but finally with nice graphics and. You try it out, and then you get hooked in that, and then Dota 2 comes up, and then you're torn in that relationship. And I had so many friends I was playing, you know, with Han, and it was hard to just to go renegade and play in Dota 2 by yourself. But I finally did it, and I'm happy I did. It's just such a great game, and I'm happy I'm at the point where I can contribute back to it because I am shit terrible at the game. But, you know. But not a bad caster, right? So how did you get into casting? I what actually made you decide casted, to go? I, I mean, like, well, first off, in my real life, I don't just keep lights. I actually am an actor, a little bit on the side. I do a lot of theater work, and I'm just a very charismatic person overall. And I just found that it works together really well. And I was, you know, a lot of people said I was really good with doing cartoon voices and stuff like that. And voiceover work, I do a little here and there. And I don't know. I was doing a little bit of it in Han. And then, like, now that I had this dumb little shtick of wearing the Kyle outfit, I kind of just made it work all together. And. <clears throat> I like it because I know there's a lot of people out there who are so good and know the game so well, and they're just great. They know why teams are picking what, why they're going, you know, and all that stuff where I want to do the opposite side of the spectrum. I'm bringing in more charismatic, more hype, more ambition into the actual casting, and then I'm learning more and more as I go to put those and make it work in, like, some work. But there's definitely a difference between people who are like, you know, the Tobies, like the shoutcasters, the ACs, who hype the game up, and it works so well when you have someone who knows the game so well on your side. I don't have that yet. Ideally, one day I would love to get to work with something like that, but I feel like I'm there to bring the hype, and people could guy just forgive me if I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. That's pretty much where I am. <laughs> All right. Well, well I, have to say, I have to say that being a part of RuneWatch was one of the highlights of my career. Yeah. Oh my god, RuneWatch 2013 was amazing. <laughs> I don't know. Just gotta, you know, it's fun to do something. You add just your own little flavor to it, and I just figured, why not, right? You know, just why not? All right. Well, we're really happy to have it in the show. Uh, quick, can I mention a quick thing which I forgot to mention already? Sure. Uh, at the end of the episode, we're gonna be giving away a free-to-play poster from TI3. Uh, you can look on my Twitter for the link to what it looks like if you haven't seen it. Um, Pretty but pictures. There'll be giveaway instructions near the end of the episode. All right, so we're going to start off with this week's patch, which, Mason, you've been kind of absent for because you've been all over Europe, apparently, but <sighs> here comes the Wraith King. Frostivus is here, which didn't become Frostivus, obviously became Wraith Knight, and we've already unlocked the Wraith King. It's basically ex-hero siege, castle defense, with a very, very, very limited hero pool. Have you guys been able to try it out that much? To uh, Mason, you might not have had much of a chance yet. I know I you did a little games. bit last night. What did you guys think of the mode so far? Well, I've played two games uh, as well, and I've had ample time. Uh, I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of these modes in general, so I'm kind of a Debbie Downer. I played it. Mm. It was kind of fun. I probably won't play it anymore. Like The biggest thing is it, it takes so so freaking long to actually like unlock anything from it, it's like I don't have time for that. I'd rather just play like normal Dota. I don't know. I you just it. hate fun. I, you know, that's, that's <laughs> you. What it is. You really do. Just I slam pick PL every fun. game, and I just make people cry. <laughs> By how bad he feeds, it's really terrible. <laughs> it, it's, it's god awfully atrocious. It makes, it makes children cry. 
Mason, what do you think of it? Um, I've only gotten to play two games so far because I got home last night and played a couple games. And uh, I was playing with my brother and some of his friends uh, that he converted from League of Legends, actually, to Dota from from his first year in college. So they were pretty shit. And uh, one of the friends decided that it would be a good idea to do the new game plus mode. And granted, <laughs> I had never played it before. I like I had no idea what this mode was. So, I mean, we did all right. We got to, like, level six or seven before <clears throat> wiping atrociously because none of us really knew what we were doing, and it was, like, the, the challenging difficulty. But uh, I like it so far. I actually think it's it's nice. And the, one of the, be- the best things I like about it is that if you have a five-man stack, you can do it really quick. It's not like dire tider like frost of us where you are like the grieveling last year when you were dependent on you know finding another group to queue up with and you know hoping it's a good game from your enemy it's entirely just you and your friends against an ai and i think that's kind of at least a nice different thing to do every once in a while so yeah overall i've enjoyed it i'll definitely be playing more games and hopefully getting more of the hang of it uh i have no fucking clue how these shard things work uh Basically, these you, need, you need essentially a million of them to get an item so I'll probably never get a million of them, but I'll enjoy killing zombies all it's the like, time. like you need like twenty thousand or something. Like you need twenty five amount. Oh you need twenty five thousand for the higher end one, and like eight thousand for the lower end. But it's not too bad because I mean I got like five thousand. If you get, I'd played two games. I got like three thousand worth. When you know what you're doing and you have the boost going, it's not too bad. Yeah, you have to Coddle. have a boost though, right? Yeah, not, it's just like. What do you think of the mode, Cuddle? I got to play more than just two games. I, you know, I, I went a bit of a binge. There was a point there when there wasn't really anything to do, you know, as far as casting going in there. And the game mode came out, obviously a lot of hype around that, people jumping into that instead of playing those kind of games. So I was like, I'll just do what everyone else is doing and just keep playing. So played some Frost of Us alone. Uh, and it was interesting. It was nice. You know, I managed to, to beat it and stuff. And it, it's good. I think it's great to have, you know, it's a good change of pace from people who play a lot. Maybe they're playing like four straight Dota games. Maybe they lose a couple of them and they want to switch things up a bit. They can hop into something like that, you know, have a terrible game there and then just hop right back into Dota and really feel motivated to come back and win. So, you know. yeah. Yeah. So it's nice, and it gives people who maybe don't have a lot of money the chance to build up those gems to get towards those items and get them for maybe... The, you know, there's also a big community for people who trade items in Dota, and they like to work with that kind of stuff. It's good to cater to more people. That way you can bring in more people. So it's a great it's a great business front, obviously. You know, And then there's people who are more diehard about just playing Dota, and they don't like the idea of it all together, and it's taken away from more people playing Dota. But that's when they step in with you know matchmaking, which I'm right. sure we'll talk Woo-hoo. about later. You know, mm-hmm. So I think it's great. I love the addition. <clears throat> We're going we're to get there, don't you worry. I, I like the mode. I played five or six games yesterday, and I played with the same group. And we beat it a few times, and I'm a big fan of tower defense games. I'm a big fan of hero sieges and castle defenses. The only thing I don't like about it is the hero pool is really, really limited. And it's, yeah. and it's still based yeah. towards people like Omni, Lena, um, Axe is really good. Legion Command is pretty good, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to see it. I mean, I'm hoping that we got a couple weeks left of this. I'm hoping that they're going to add more through patches with like some additions to it, a little bit of balancing. And I'm hoping that eventually, I'd like to see it stick around. I'd really like this, other than private servers, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. I'm definitely hoping that this sort of becomes the first iteration. Well, it it basically is the first iteration yeah. of custom games because it's using an entirely different map, an entirely different game mode. You know, uh, yeah, Dire Tide is different, and the Grieveling were different, but you know, it used the same map. Like this is something entirely new. Um, there was some post on Reddit. Uh, that somebody sort of looked into the code behind it and god knows i don't understand what the fuck that means but basically (laughs) there was something with the strings and the coding and you know the the thingamajigs that alluded (laughs) to the fact that this was created with some sort of like a modified game engine and not just within dota itself lua it's lua LUA yeah yeah so it's in an add-in directory so add-on directory so basically it's it's kind of the way that add-ons are going to happen is they're all going to get put in this Dota slash add-ons slash whatever it is when the custom game mode set. Now, how are they going to be sent out there? Who knows how you're going to get them? But that's people were saying. Actually. Don't mean to somebody. People were saying that if they wanted to, they could just made it all private, and then no one would know how it was done. And but they made it out there for people to yeah. see, so that now we can take it the next step, or now we can show you. Even though we've been saying that it's something we're looking into, now they're physically showing. Hey. You know, we're still thinking about the custom games. We're still thinking about the people who want to do like tower defenses, Uther parties, whatever. Yeah. So right. I'm hoping that all of that translates mm-hmm. into Wraith Knight sticking around post Frostivus 
and maybe sort of being the hint that we are definitely moving. I mean, I think it's definitely a hint that we're moving towards the direction of custom games. It's going to happen eventually. I, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I do hope it sticks around, though, because I think it's I think it's fun. And honestly, I think it's a lot more fun than the Grieveling was last year, although oh, yeah. that event was so much fun to cheese. <laughs> but what if they make one great custom game that's so good that a company hires them and they make their own spinoff of a game and then Valve has to sue them? <laughs> <laughs> Valve would be smart enough to actually try to own it before it yeah. went out that far. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my. We will have it. come full circle, jerk circle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for Enfos. I love Enfos so much. But um, so now Skeleton King, R.I.P. Kind of. I mean, he was already dead, but R.I.P. Skeleton <laughs> King, right? Wraith King comes in, which we're all thinking it's the Blizzard copyrights yeah, causing yeah. the issue. I feel like I feel like Blizzard just like. Gave them a list of uh, hero names. You're like, yeah, if you could change these, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Thanks. Like, so basically, Sipping. there's just like a list of like ten heroes. They're like, yeah, you need to change all these heroes in some kind of timely manner because they're not just gonna like change them all at once. But you know, we've kind of seen slowly seen heroes kind of adjust a little bit. And it's whatever. I mean, it's it sucks if you're a caster because you'll get flamed if you use the old name. You'll get flamed if you use the new name. So you get flamed no matter what, which is really no different than normal. But <laughs> I'm still using Windrun. <laughs> Yeah, who's still left? Is there anyone left that still needs their name to be changed? I'm trying to think off the top of my head, or is, was that uh, pretty much it? Not that I know of, but I had no idea that Skeleton King was a problem. Like, how the f like that seems like a pretty generic concept yeah. to me. <laughs> I, I think I feel like the model is more of the issue than the name, or they would have just changed the name because yeah, I, I've been going back and playing Diablo three a little bit, and you know how at you know sort of like the mid of Act one you fight you know Leoric the Skeleton King like. It's it looks almost exactly like Skeleton King in Dota 2, and it's not like something. I mean, that's kind of unavoidable. It's a fucking Skeleton King. Like you can only make it look so many different ways. But it, it was probably an issue with the model and the idea of it more than the name itself. Otherwise, there would have been no reason to do a full hero rework. You know, it like as opposed to like Windrunner, who just you know had a name change. It was you know it needed well, a full smart. revamping. They were smart because they put it in this. This fucking hype mode, right? It's yeah, like, no, I love man, the way they did it. Look at this new mode. And it's like, don't don't notice that we're changing Skeleton King. Look at Wraith King. <laughs> That's how they did I, it. I liked it. I really liked the way that they sort of were able to incorporate this thing into, you know, like lore wise. Like, if, if they just dropped a patch and said, by the way, Skeleton King's gone. We have Wraith King now. Here's an entirely new model set, new name, <laughs> new lines. And, like, here you go. Wall. Have fun. Yeah. Everybody would have been like, what in the actual fuck just happened? Mm -hmm. So I think the way of doing it this way and making you know the event out of it and giving it some some lore background and sort of really being able to see like the full development of it, I think eased some transitions. Yeah, I agree. They were smart about it. Um, did you guys? This isn't even in the patch notes, but it annoys the shit out of me. Did you guys see the materials for Phoenix come on there? Uh, I, I remember glancing at them. It's like it's not a bird it, anymore, right? No, it's like fucking fire puck is what I called it. It's Wait, like a what? puck kind of thing. They change it from a fucking... Here's the thing, all right? Phoenix is my number one favorite mythical creature in the fucking world, okay? Oh, God. And I'm waiting for it. Like, I'm wow, like, right man. out there. Okay. Why does this not surprise me? <laughs> I'm like, man, I can't wait. This would be awesome. This would be a Phoenix. I'm going to play it. I don't care for shit. And it's like, oh my God. fire puck. Are you fucking kidding me? You had one job. Keep it a goddamn Phoenix. And you didn't do that. I mean, I applaud their ability to, to make something different, and it's probably going to be awesome. Fire Puck doesn't sound different at all. It sounds <laughs> like Puck with fire on it. Well, that's what it kind of looks like. Yeah. I mean, it's I feel like... It's still a little early. It's still a little early. It's still early. Yeah, yeah, Legion Commander looked like a transvestite when she started. <laughs> now she's a full-blown female. <laughs> and look at Elder Titan. He looked really sad, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, it looks good. Elder Titan looked like a sad old man that just been destroyed his entire life. I mean, he carries on a stapler for a living. I don't know. <laughs> he got off his nine. He got off, love the staple gun. He got off his nine to five job. He's now on yeah. retirement funds on a limited income. <laughs> you know, he's got to fight in a gladiator type battle to stay alive long enough. Uh, Excuse me, sir, I believe you have my astral spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to blow up the building. Um, <laughs> Derek, if you you really do seem to have like. Like, whenever a hero is changed or, like, something different is introduced, you always seem to have such a a personal connection <laughs> to whatever's being changed or altered. It's really amazing. Like, I call it, whether it was Windrunner's it... name or Phoenix's model, there's always just this, like, 
this whole emotional backstory of why y you're like borderline in tears every time something is changed. <laughs> he takes everything personally, man. My father was a phoenix. <laughs> oh my god. I, I call it empathy, Mason. It's empathy? Empathy. Yeah. empathy for the I feel so bad for those girl. pixels. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, let's. With Frost of this came a fucking insane sale, right? Mm. Worst bought, timing like, ever. <laughs> I gotta buy Christmas time. gifts for everyone. Yeah, dude, I'm so <laughs> poor right now. Dude, Jesus. Fucking really. It's Steam, awful. Steam does the same. It's like, welcome uh, to the Christmas sale. And I'm like, I got no money. Steam. No, Steam, no. <laughs> but it's like 75% off. I bought $12 items for like. Two dollars and seventy nine cents. I bought like five sets, a backpack extender because, <laughs> and <laughs> and Bastion announcer for like eighteen bucks. And I'm not even done. It's just like I didn't oh, have any money this week. It's going on until January fourth. Oh, well, oh, you know, I didn't get anything yet from the Christmas sale, but I did finally get my uh uh uh. Yo, you guys can't see it. It's the Dota headset. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. nice. I have the old one. I'm wearing yeah, the old one right now. It's very. It's uh. It lights up, which was unexpected for me. So as soon as it lit up, I instantly became much more excited. I didn't uh, know it lights up. <laughs> it, yeah, the sides light up. It's got the little microphone thingy, but uh, oh, it came with the, It came with the the well, one one of the kings of all hats, the sight device. So that's pretty sweet. But I wore that, that a long a... time ago. Valve shipping is just like Valve time. It took like almost a month. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well. What else Three to came? five business days. <laughs> Does anyone think about? Did anyone think about the poor trade values? These poor traders out uh, there that have no. like twelve dollars sets, like you know, four key, three key items that are now like a key. Well, here's a theory. Here's a theory. Is it possible that they could just remove the item? I mean, some will have to sale, got some stuff, but after the sale, I know they removed items from the store, right? Is it possible to remove it afterward? And they yeah. Have. I mean, could this be like like a clearance sale sort of yeah, thing? A yeah. digital clearance well, almost sale. Almost everything's I mean, possible. I don't know. Like what? it's like twelve. No. It's like twelve pages of fucking sales. It's a lot I of mean, sales. It, yeah. It's like I mean, they gave her some of them definitely, and they've done it before. It's just, I, I feel like I want to buy like multiples of a bunch of sets and then just wait like four months. But my problem is I'll just keep the shit because I know I'm a pack rat. <laughs> So yeah, dude, oh my god, I, I, there's like so many things I regret from when I started playing Dota. Right when cosmetics got introduced, I saw the Ursa set, and I was like, oh, that's like kind of weird, I don't really think I want it. And I like, I literally, oh. at one point, I added it to my cart, and I was like, oh, I don't know, it's kind of, it's like neat, but it's kind of weird looking. If I had fucking bought that, god damn. Although, I'm wait, swimming in hats. Uh, the thing is that, yeah, I'm, I'm also like, I would never, <laughs> I would never sell it. Like, that's the problem. Never hey, Coddle, hmm? ask about his Battle Furies. Oh, no, oh, his time breakers. Fucking God. Oh, time breakers, excuse me. Dude, what, at, one point I traded, at one point I traded a time breaker for an ice tiny skin. He traded two of them away, actually. And one of them, yeah, but one of them was like to one of my friends and it was for like... Oh, God. One of them he, ain't was, good, he ain't good enough of a friend. Yeah, apparently. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. To be fair, the value God. of the time breakers has come down a little bit. Like, they're only... They're, I think... Between, I think they're like fifty-ish keys now, so oh. it's like hundred bucks. Oh yeah, that's nothing. That's uh, well, I mean, considering uh, before you could honestly get almost like two hundred to two hundred and twenty-five dollars worth of keys for it, like that's a fairly big price. It, but yeah, it's still a hundred bucks. I was I was looking at um the Arcanas for oh, Legion Commander God. and and uh, oh, it's... Lena. And I'm like, I wonder if it's a good deal to trade, you know, like a Fezzel because I got like Fez, like three of them for those two Arcanas. I look at, it, I'm like, nope, being mm -hmm. I'm being destroyed. Because it's like 160 bucks for a Fez right now. Some of the item values are absurd. I got like $450 worth of money that I can't even use. <laughs> wow. So is, it, is a Fez really worth 100 Yeah, I guess it's still worth about it's 80 keys. 80 keys. Yeah. 80 keys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. The other the other two float between like 50 and 60 bucks a piece. It's just ridiculous. It's But we'll see what happens. I mean, I think, I think they'll get rid of some of them eventually. And I think the price... But we still got a good... It's gonna be a while. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Rebound, though, yeah. New Good coddle pack. set came out though. Bought that right away. <laughs> yeah. What a What's, surprise. Which coddle set do you? Which have one? you seen the one that has like the ethereal unicorn thing? Oh, I got that already. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's <laughs> spent real money. For that. He spent real money. For that. I like the new set a lot. Actually, it's got even a new animation for the blast. He's wearing like a reindeer. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's that great. one. Yeah, the new one. Yeah, the reindeer's fucking awesome. I like yeah. the reindeer. 
It's great. You add the horn onto that, and you got yourself some crazy evil beast. (laughs) I have many bad ideas a day, and I'm looking at my credit card. I'm like, I got 50 bucks on this credit card. I could buy the Legion Commander. Oh, my God. (laughs) You sound like me. It's like, Like, I could could go buy a six-pack right now. And it's it's like an actual (laughs) thought that I'm contemplating in my head going, I could do that. (laughs) I, I could... I it's could free. put this money towards towards something else, or or, or I, could I could not buy hats. <laughs> I could not ruin my credit by having my credit limit go above fifty percent. But I'm not going to use that anytime soon. <laughs> you know, <laughs> buy my nephew that use the Fisher Price toy, or I could just get myself that cuddle staff. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Yeah, pull for you. I could make somebody's Christmas a miracle. <laughs> Or I could make myself feel better. <laughs> oh, fucking nephew's not getting anything. He's a mooch anyway. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Add to cart. There, there it is. All right. So there's loading screens now. Yeah, there is. Those awesome. are. I haven't. I'm gonna buy the that AM set. I have it. Okay. First Good. of all, that AM set is fucking amazing. Oh, Those yeah. blades, it's bucks? dude. The blades are like the, the coolest goddamn thing I've ever seen. In fact, is this the, also. Is this the burning set? No, 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 no. This one makes the burning set look like yeah. Just poor, crap. poor burning. I'm going, this I'm set going looks on the Dota store, right? I'm it's going like on the Dota store. It's whatever. It's it's like these green blades, and they like float, and it also comes with a loading screen, and it's like four bucks. That yeah, I bought it. I bought. Hold two on. Sets I'm gonna look at this right now. I bought two sets for under ten bucks, and I was ecstatic because usually it's like twelve bucks, thirteen bucks for it. Dude, it's so nice. Yeah, it, it really seems is. like it seems like a lot of the items are. A lot of the item sets are a lot cheaper, which I am green floating glaze. Okay, with blades. I think it's, no, it's purple. It's still or purple. Purple. I think. Is, is it, it the the legacy yeah. of the awakened? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, it's and it comes amazing. with the and it comes with the loading screen. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm using oh, right now. Oh shit! That's yeah. Pretty. I, need, I need to get that one. There's an Ursa one too that's in there. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck that. Yeah, I think. I like but Ursa. I mean, the other Kunkka ones are coming, so I'm hoping that they show up soon. That's I'm neat. So I'm glad happy. I want animated. I really want animated. I want animated loading screen screens. That'd be next. pretty cool. You know? Oh yeah. I want dynamic. I want shiny things like flashing me all the time, Shocker. to keep my attention. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very unlike you. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably like Phoenix out there who are making great splash screens. I'm glad that now they can put it up on the market, and get something for it. Yeah, Hunker, absolutely. Right. So good. See, here's the thing though. I feel like so there was a there was a post on uh, our Dota two. It was like you know somewhere between like the second half of the second page there and it was like you know, the title was just like does anybody else feel like this is the prices that the cosmetics should be at like this like this 75 percent reduce right now and i was trying to think about that and part of me says that i understand why things get up to you know 10 12 dollars the modelers take you know a really long time to make this stuff you know you definitely want to give them their money's worth and you know pay them for the real the real amounts of hours and effort that's put into it but at the same time, I would never buy a twelve dollar set, and I know that Darius is very different in that. <laughs> but like, I have no problem going and like saying I'm going to buy a few sets at like two fifty a piece. Like that's a good price point for me. And I feel like a lot more people have bought stuff with these sales, and so I wonder sort of, you know, how that math evens out to somebody, you know, sales that they're getting at full price as opposed to sales that they're getting at a heavily reduced price i'm okay with like the arcanas being really expensive that's fine i'm fine and like maybe like a set here and there like the first anuxi marana set is still like one of the best sets um it's true but i think like i think you know in general i i would agree that i think this is more the price that i expect the sets to be because like the average set is like six dollars now yeah. And while the quality of them have definitely gone up since, you know, the workshop was sort of first opened, I don't think they're all worth $6 anymore. Yeah. And yeah. I know... Well, there's also so much competition much. for... But, like, between... Uh, I mean, there's so much competition. You can only use one set at a time, you know? So. Yeah. Well, like, there was that Queen of Pain set that came out, I think, two patches ago, where it was the Queen of Pain set for, like, 250 And, like, it was, it was a pretty good-looking set. And I bought that, like, almost instantly. Like... I didn't have a Queen of Pain set. Everything else was like the Navi set for like ten dollars, or everywhere else between like you know six and eight dollars. And this was a a good looking set for you know two dollars and fifty cents, two dollars and twenty five cents, or whatever it was. And I jumped on it. Like that's the price point that I'm happy with that I can make an impulse buy on, you know, and not sit there and think, well, you know, do I really want to spend ten dollars on this? 
Yeah, do I need this or do I need to go get a six pack? You know, and once yeah. and that's, once if that's for me, that's the breaking point. If I can buy a six pack I, with that I money, feel, then we've got to have a I, talk. I feel like the point of the Dota Two store is it, it should be like impulse buys. It should be like something comes out and you're like, oh shit, I want that and grab it immediately, rather than sitting there and agonizing over whether or not you want to pay for something. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. I I will debate this though and say that if you have a ten dollar set. I mean, you may not get as many sales for the person, but at the same time, we hit a, play, a time like this, we're actually having this sale. If you got a four dollar set that's seventy percent off, and they get like a buck, you figure they make sixty cents or whatever. Yeah, but they didn't discount any of the really cheap sets, right? They discounted. Mm, uh... like, they discounted the stuff that was older, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing they they discounted, which is the stuff that may not get sold a lot anyway, because people like new and shiny normally. Mm -hmm. But still, yet, if you have a set that's a baseline four dollars. And it goes on a seventy-five percent sale. We're gonna get like eighty cents for that, or seventy cents, or whatever the whatever the cuts are. That's the only concern I have about really cheap. I mean, it's good for us in terms of buying, but it may not be good for the people that are trying to make it as a living, like Anuxi or Tivadoto. Uh, I think they do <clears throat> okay. Let's get her on here and ask her exactly how much she made. Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure she's at, at willing to uh, disclose that information. <laughs> Tell us. So. We spoke about her briefly earlier. Legion Commander has now arrived in the scene. Have you guys gotten any chance to mess with her at all? I mean, Coddle only plays Coddle. So I played. Uh, I played one game. Uh, <laughs> she seems pretty good. I don't know. She seems it's, pretty powerful. It's a very. Though. I played actually quite a bit of Legion Commander in Dota One when I was first getting into Dota, and I mean, God knows I was fucking awful, but it's. I mean, she is such a strong hero. Like mm -hmm. it's. Her all she doesn't really have a, a bad ability, and if you can pick good duels throughout the game, and don't completely fuck it up, you're just unstoppable. Yeah, you get huge. Like because the thing is, like I was playing with someone, I was playing Quap, and we had a Legion commander, and me and him just walked around. He dueled someone. I would just scream them and like maybe dagger them. And they would just like die. Like you don't have to just duel like by yourself. If you have a hero yeah. coming along with you. You can just like rig the fight, catch someone out, and they're just dead. Like there's nothing they can do. Because literally Legion... they're stuck just auto attacking Legion Commander. It's like... Legion Commander, Life Stealer, New Meta, Infest Bomb, oh Infest Dual Bombs. God, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. Yeah. And I don't want to think about this. Uh, sorry, uh, it's just uh, I, I'm a very support heavy guy, and I think Legion Commander also makes a great support. I mean, obviously she's good in the jungle. She could play that four role, I think. I know it's a long off before we see her in like captain's mode or being drafted anytime soon until she's got all those edges, you know polished but you can play her in the jungle and you can think of her duel almost as a nice cc imagine pairing yeah. that with a ghost scepter you know maybe right before you do it now you're holding someone there and you can pick their prime target out you're their life stealer their whoever they're carrying their weaver hold her pin them you know pin them there and then you can time everything after that or you can allow the rest of your team to sweep through those weaker supports while you're isolating and holding them there it's it's a great cc tool as well she's gonna be very versatile as she is right now, I wouldn't be surprised she's picked up early and people can get her like an Elder Titan and just change her around as the draft goes on. And no, oh, well, we wanted her as a mid. Now we're thinking about making her be the support, and it would work out. No, I, I agree with you. Um, Legion Commander was actually, at least from my experience, was played in the jungle a lot back in Dota One. At you know, at least at my shit tier, I guess, just because um, like press the attack and her lifesteal are just really strong and it makes jungling really easy you get to level three and you are never in any danger of dying whatsoever because the lifesteal procs early and often it's a couple free attacks and you know you come out of lane when you hit level six you get a free duel on somebody and it's time to start stomping and yeah. she can she can bring back life to somebody she can dispel debuff she can heal somebody she can mm -hmm. increase their damage mm -hmm. she's a really good Help for like yeah, a, I th a I think, hard I think, carry too. I think as mm -hmm. a four, it's a pretty. I feel like yeah. it would be a legit pick. Yeah, yeah. I Definitely. don't think she. I think the laning, her doesn't have any great like laning abilities. But I think as a as kind of like a four that you know I can see a lot of captains playing this because if you get like a blink dagger, you can actually just set up ridiculous ganks with that hero. Mm. Mm -hmm. Great. I I kind of feel bad that the Arcana came out like immediately with her though because it's not enough time for people to get used to the original version but we're going to switch over the arcana because i'm one of those dumb dumb fucks that will go and buy it anyway like right off the bat <laughs> you know and we i'll know never you know what, are i'll never know what the real animations were like <laughs> the original ones i'll just know her with her flaming swords and shit so i feel like they could have waited a little bit but 
it's, that's, you know, it's a hype release. It. I get it. It is. I get it, but still. But, all right. Uh, all right, let's talk about what you guys are all caring about and you guys being oh, on yeah. this panel. Ranked matchmaking. Oh, Ranked my God. Count. Yep. It's beautiful. I, okay, so I haven't finished all my calibration games yet, but I've played a significant amount of games. My only complaint is that all pick sucks. All pick is horrible. I will never yeah. play all pick ranked. It's just until Valve changes it. So at zero, you get like randomed or something. I will just not play it because it's just like having to just sit there and like pick a hero and just know that you're going to get counterpicked is so goddamn painful. It's like, oh, I'm going to pick a Weaver. Like I picked Weaver once and instantly, like after minute zero, I was like Bounty Hunter Slardar and I was like, oh. <laughs> well, this fuck. game's gonna be great. Like, we, that was me and Mason going against him. Actually, it was like <laughs> horrible. So, I don't know. I, I've been having, I've been even like solo queuing Captain's Draft and Captain's Mode, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. People seem to be a little bit more willing to like collaborate and stuff. A lot of my friends were being like lame and wanted to play Wraith King, so I just solo queued rank match bunch, and it, it's a lot of fun. I don't know. Do it, you think was I, I'm interested to see how people's ratings stack up. Um, you know, compared to like my Dota skill and stuff. Mm -hmm. so. if, if me and Mason beat you in our skills, oh my god, I'll never play Dota again. You'll kill it. You'll kill yourself. Yeah, I probably. wonder if Nick will show back up. You think Nick? Will oh, run? he, dude, he's already. He's, he's like, he is. He's already he is back in. All man. about. For those of you who might not know who we're talking about, it's uh, our friend, our friend Nick, who uh, Cruel GGs. He was on the show a bit, kind of when we first started. He uh, he took a bit of a hiatus from Dota because he was a little bit frustrated he's with it. H -Y -H -Y, but H uh, Y H Y basically. <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> yeah, he was the, like, fuck uh, this, going to law. And he came back. The minute ranked matchmaking was announced, he's like, I'm fucking back. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's what he wanted. He had wanted something to be able to measure his skill against other people. Yeah, you need an EP in med, like you need an EP yeah. ruler, and this is perfect. So Is this is this a mode that you care about, Coddle, or is it just something? Well, else? obviously it just is is as Greg was saying, is I'm obviously more of an AP picker because I like to get what I want, and that's Coddle usually. But uh, I'm okay with that. Hair. I'm okay. You know, with people that, man. will want to counter that right away, so it then becomes, you know, I'd rather roll with a group of people, and I haven't really found the uh, opportune time yet to jump on and get that going just yet. I'm sure I will come the new year and really get to play some more matchmaking, but. I don't know. I think it's great. It's great for a lot of players. It's kind of hurting the, a lot of hype right now, so it's kind of hurting the NEL a little bit and yeah. uh, finding games to cast and getting that while everyone's jumping on it. So we'll see. It's mm -hmm. it's definitely a plus. That's for sure. Yeah, I think. Well, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how NEL and EEL do after this. Me and you are both pretty involved in that. Um, I think there's still a place for the NEL because NEL is uh, you know there's a prize pool. Um, it really has its own community, so I think NEL is fine. You know, IXDL Open might be in a bit of trouble, but whatever. I don't know. But then again, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I mean he's right. So NEL, NEL still has a place, be, whereas yeah. you know you'll be going against really good competition, and that's yeah. more practice. If you're, is this is something you take seriously? Whereas rank, ranked MM, you could power stack your team and then just, just sweep through a bunch of yeah. corrupt, you know, a bunch of randos. But you, if you want to take the game seriously, you want to go against the better players, and you'll find those in the NEL, at least as far as NA Dota goes. You'll yeah. find the better players, and you'll get to go against them. You may not like it, because you'll get your ass beat, but sometimes you need to get your ass beat to get better. Yeah. You know? and, you have, and you have exposure, too. Like, you have exposure mm -hmm. through the tournament system. Yeah, like, people know who you are, like Mason. Like, no one knew who Mason was before the NEL. We still don't know who Mason is. Well, I mean... It's me. Wait, he's a, oh, my God. Oh! <laughs> Mason, it's it's me, guys. Yeah, it's you. I'm Mason. Oh, my God. I can't God. believe that. That's amazing. Why haven't you taught us your ways of playing better? Why do you I, suck I, so I, bad all the time? I like prefer to hide my identity <laughs> so that I don't, you know, get random friend requests all the time. People oh, being yeah. like, dude, can you teach me? Uh, I'm uh, like, nah, man. I got <laughs> NELs to win. Yeah. Who's going to change it, their names so there's no more confusion once one of them becomes more popular than the other? That's the question. Well, <laughs> well, he spells it with an I, so technically we're all right for right now. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I think... <laughs> yeah. I think his popularity is uh, maybe slightly more than me right now, but uh, we'll, we'll see if that stands. We're live streaming now, so it's okay. He's still going to start going downhill. You'll all get to see my hill. beautiful face, and it'll be good. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, right. All right. <laughs> so... We also there was a post on the uh, blog about the matchmaking before it even came out, which kind of said that the precursor, the hint that this was coming, which was this really long post that we're not going to talk about. But I suggest you guys, if you haven't seen it, go check the blog. It's a few posts back now at this point. It's all about how Valve did their matchmaking in the 
ELO system and how they rated everything. So just yeah, go check it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't want to go into it, but just go check it out if you haven't seen it because it's a good read. Yeah, I read it. I read it over, and just like some of the basic points, it's obviously not all about all about wins and losses. They consider how well you actually perform in the game, and they also formulate if you're in a big stack, if you're in a little stack. So it's nice. They, it's not just like oh, if you just lose a lot, you're not going to get anywhere. Like they consider how well you play, whether you're support carry or whatever, and go from there. And then they'll make sure they try their best to make it a you know fifty percent win loss for either team. So it's it's good to see that they're you know they have all that data put there. What is the uh, the highest MMR that you guys have seen on like a stream or something? I have no idea. No, I, I, I haven't been looking. Artezis <laughs> is like fifty three hundred, which is like Jesus. absolutely like That's 90, the ninety nine percent is like forty one hundred, and he's fifty three hundred. So that was the highest that I've seen. What's the, what's like the max number? Do we there know is, yet? I don't think there is there, a max. I, I don't think there. There's, yeah, but there's no like public max at least. But what like number is good? Like if you're above 4700, you're probably very. If you're very good. above, if you're above 4100, then you're in the top one percent. Oh, oh, so okay. I'm fit by 5200 is fine then. Oh good. yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. you're you're doing all right for yourself. <laughs> all right, good. Hey, with this patch though came some game updates, 6.79c, and we're not going to go through all of them, but let's touch base on a few of them. They nerfed hand of Midas. The cost of the recipe is now from fourteen hundred to fifteen fifty. Do you think this is enough to stop Midas gaming, or do you think it's still going to happen? I don't know if it's uh, enough. I mean, that's like one more jungle camp if you're a support. I actually think that this nerf is is more significant for carries because three last hits in lane versus like uh, a support just like randomly picking one up. I think is actually a much more significant nerf um, because. Like I said, like one fifty is like you know that's one creep camp. The biggest hero that I think about this on like like abusive hand of Midas usage is Crystal Maiden. Uh, because you can just you can literally jungle from level one. Um, and I don't She just know. got but she just got nerfed too, actually, a little bit. But. Yeah, but like I don't think I think that it's still I think it's still fine. Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like no, a, I think it's it much. seems like a nerf, but it doesn't seem significant enough to like I mean it won't be to the point now where like literally five people on the team get it, but I mean, maybe it still will be. Fnatic maybe down to three. Will. Maybe like three <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. A small we'll hindrance, have, yeah. nothing severe. No, not like we won't see it anymore, but yeah. I think it's not the end that we're going to see with the Midas and the changes coming to it. Yeah, I think it needs a different kind of rework than, you know, just an increased cost. Because that's like one more usage, right? Use it one more time and it pays for itself. So. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> they fixed power cogs, knockback AoE being too big. Fuck. Dude, Dude that, that is a... Uh, that's been a long time coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That hero so, is stupid. How much bigger was it than it was intended to be? Like, is it very significant? Sometimes, like, the knockback was too big, and, like, sometimes it felt like you were getting fucking vacuumed into cogs. Like, <laughs> weird things would happen. I think it's just a little bit more consistent out now, but... And no, apparently it's, it's good. It's needed. Uh, in, uh, Clockwork was seen like ninety percent ban or pick, and it needed a little something. Just kind of, you know, come back, come back to earth a little bit. Just, just a little bit. You know, bring it down. Bring it down a couple. Just, just, just turn it down a little bit. Yeah. And apparently, Valve is watching Jiraxel with uh, oh my fucking god Stone Spirit because magnetic grip cast range was reduced from fourteen hundred to eleven hundred. Boulder Smash silence duration was reduced from five to a three point five four, four point five and a five. And then Boulder Smash's unit knockback range scale from 800 to 5, 6, 7, and 800 per rank. I think this is, more, guys... this is more in line with what this hero should be. Like, yeah. I, like when this hero came out, I wouldn't, like, I, I don't know. I have a lot of problems with all pick because, like, that hero was just so broken. Like, he was so there good was from... just nothing you could do against that hero in lane. Like, you got to level 3, and, like, and you just, like think about, it, think about it this way. These these five second silences and the knockback range and the cast range were all something he had at level three. Yeah. Like it was just the damage and the mana that it scaled. Was stupid. And so the amount that he could stun silence and knock you back at level three was a, a kill on like anybody, like literally anybody. So this just kind of I think prevents him having a too ridiculous. Of he's a start. still he's still yeah. a really good hero, but he is I think he is slightly less. Stupid now. He, yeah. as Coddle said, he's a little bit more back down to earth now. Yeah, he, he, he's, you know, this clearly prevents him from snowballing so hard so early. He still has great tools. He has the stuns, the silences, and the pushbacks, and the free force staff, and everything. Just 
not so good early. That It was a bit much, all right? It was just yeah. a bit too much early to be able to snowball that quick and that heavy. And he's already a pretty good snowball hero, but it's like, why don't we just go ahead and already give you this much snow <laughs> at the start? <laughs> yeah. And the final two changes we'll talk about is Slark and Huskar were added to CM. So my question is, will this help Liquid get out of their rut lately? Uh, no. No. I Maybe, mean, I don't know. Like, I could see a world where they somehow they pick... Slark, I think, is much better than... Like, Huskar is still not going to get picked. That hero is still ass. Slark is I, I wanna uh, see, pretty good, I think. I want to see somebody somebody man up and find a way to use a Huskar at least once. Horrible. Now that those, like, cheese... Is yeah, like, now that working. you can't, like, fake orb cast through Ghost Scepters, it's pretty yeah, it's not, not great anymore. I'd like to see it once just for the novelty, but uh, I think Slark can be legit. Loda just played good. him today mm -hmm. and uh, went really well. He was, um... Ugh, he had some horrendous win rate pre-patch, uh, pre-this patch, um, like 2-9 and nine or something like that. And then since he's been introduced, he's been picked up a couple times, and I think is undefeated, or at least close to undefeated. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he's a slippery bastard. You build him defensive, you give him a Lincoln Sphere and some drums, you're not going to kill him. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'd really like to see, and I hope it kind of works out, is that... Um, uh, Alliance was playing Sigma today, and Loda picked up the Slark, and uh, Sigma has Miguel, who is an incredibly good Slark player. Uh, back when they were on flip side, um, when he was sort of playing the that one role like, for them. Yeah, that was like their TI3 qualifier pocket. Oh, yeah. They got... Th that was when Slark was first added to Captain's Mode mm -hmm. in Dota 2, and I... I can't remember them losing a game like with yeah, him playing Slark. Really it well. was absolutely once. absurd. Yeah. So I'd like to see, you know, fucking Matt, if you're listening, let's let's get Miguel on a Slark. Let's see how it works out for you guys. I'm sure. But, I uh, bet they will. But yeah, I think that Slark can be a legit pick. I'd like to see Huskar once, although I know it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. He's kind of calmed down in pubs. Like There was a time we'd see Huskar every match, and now he's kind of calmed down a bit. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, no one in a while. In games, I mean, what do you do? You put a middle, maybe give a mechanism. That's like that's. It. I mean, and and he's so easily shut down. A lot of teams like to run their minus armor. They like to run their focus fire, and Huskar would get ripped apart no problem later into the game. He might have a successful early mid game, but if you don't even get that, then it's just nowhere. Where Slark is just someone who's so great, and I watched those same games today with Loda playing him, and it, it's ridiculous. His regen is absurd. He leaps out a little bit, comes right back, and he's full and ready to go. It's it's crazy. He'll, we'll be seeing him a lot, that's for sure. Now, Twitch.tv updated the servers, which I haven't had to deal with it personally, but Mason, you have. So, They're apparently not that good, so why don't oh you go God. take that? I'll be right back in one second. got to turn a light on here. All right, so... Have you guys heard, like, the constant complaints from over in Europe about how bad Twitch is over there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As I lived in the UK for the past two months, I can agree that Twitch is fucking horrible on the other side of the Atlantic. <laughs> it is literally ass. <laughs> I couldn't watch... I had to watch Twitch through VLC for my entire time there. I could not actually load any video on Twitch TV itself. It just wouldn't, and if anything actually loaded, it would be so stuttery and horrible that it just wasn't worth it. And then over VLC, it did this really weird thing where the game would pause and then repeat the audio until it caught back up with present time. It was just fucking awful. So I was really happy to come back to the States where Twitch has worked for me pretty well so far. But ever since this new update that they pushed out, which is they improved some servers... Uh, some of their like server stations over in Europe, so that's good. I'm, I don't think anything can be considered bad about that. But as we were talking about a little bit before the show, they changed the way that their like video encoding system works, so that it's supposed to be smoother. But I don't know. All I've had is buffering for the past like two days. It'll just freeze, and I have a very good internet connection. I have you know a good computer, and it it's just worse than it was before. <laughs> You know, I think if they're using a whole new method, it'll get better. But I want to get to this thing that Kyle Guy posted about on Reddit before he asked to head yeah, out. Yeah, that was my rant. Let's, uh, why don't you explain this? You had a post the other day. which uh, Yeah, this was just, it was just out of frustration from yesterday. I mean, obviously the patch came out. There's a lot of hype for that. 
And meanwhile, for someone like me, and I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to leave here. I'm going up to California for the holiday. And it's like, and the lady left before me. She's not very good with flying. So she took the train. I have the apartment to myself. I could go 110% in this cast. I can nail it if I wanted to, right? Nude cattle cast. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Oh, I'm hyped up. I'm ready to go. There isn't a game anywhere to be cast. It's just like, no one's playing. And if you're not in Beyond the Summit, if you're not enjoying Dota, you know, your options are very limited. Like I had at one point I was doing the Dota 2 cast it request for players, but most of the time they're just pub games where one team sweeps to the other and there's no drafting. You don't even really get to really get any practice in like game theory craft. It's just kind of I'm practicing talking <laughs> over their game and just like I mean, given, you know, they're they're good players and it's fun and any practice is, is practice, whatever. But It'd be just so much nicer if I'm like, I played a Dota game, like, I want to cast the game. I hit a button, hop into a queue, the queue finishes, and I'm instantly placed into a broadcaster slot of a very high matchmaking game. Just the same way it's organized when you go to watch a matchmaking game. But I get to hop in right when they're doing their draft, maybe if it's a captain's game or if it's a solo whatever. And I cast along with it, and maybe people tune in who normally just watch those random casual games. Maybe they, they see an option now to to go with one of the broadcasters that have queued up with it you can go with them if you'd like and i don't know i thought it was a good idea i mean realistically could it be done i don't know do they feel there's a big enough audience who wants it probably not but just for people like me or anyone out there you know who knows who wants to be a caster no other game really caters to casters to give them good recreation good practice it's like why not take an investment and go for something like that i mean it's a real role that they need to fill for a lot of these esports games now and esports games in the future why not invest in a way that people can practice stuff like that I mean, now? There's usually like 300 people watching those top games. Like, yeah, usually. I think at, that like at least. I think it's a really, really, really good idea. Like, I think there'd have to be some kind of way to, like, uh, like approve the casters or something, or some kind of submission system, or like where you know, so like random assholes aren't like clogging up slots and cheating on games, or like that would happen. It could, it That's could be something. It would be, but like, I think that there, there's. I think it's a great idea, basically. It could be something like, kind of like the commend and report system now, where if someone comes in and they cast the game and they're absolute shit or they're... Or, they're, or it's nobody. It's just some AFK person doing nothing. You can easily just hit a you, button to report you them. You strike them. Yeah, boom. And, then yeah. They can't, and they can't cast for, say, a week or if they get X amount of reports. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Kind of the same kind of like a low priority caster pool, if you will. <laughs> oh in which God. you have to and, actually and, make the casters cast low yes. priority. Yes, yeah. you actually have to cast low <laughs> they, priority. They have to cast three low priority oh. matches they before they're allowed to cast rank match games. They have to yeah. cast games. But it can't be automated because what would happen is like. Everyone would be, be like, the caster would make a mistake, and everyone would be like, fuck that, strike him. And then he'd yeah, be screwed. Exactly. Like, that would definitely Hello, happen. Hello, everybody. This is LD. Casting low priority Dota. Let's check it out. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you all. Thank you. Um, <laughs> no, there has to be a system. There has to be. I mean, I don't know what it could be. Like the same way, like beta testers apply for applications on things. I don't know if casters could make applications, or they have a service they could build for that, where you can apply to be a caster. They obviously yeah. know that you're not just some schmuck troll or whatever. Or like you can't just. I think it's a great yeah. idea. Or even Thumbs like up. some sort of vouch system, like sort of what IXDL does, where maybe yeah. you have to like, you, you can either you know some sort of like you know nominal application to be able to go through or maybe get vouched by somebody else who's already in there so you know when bts might want to bring in a new guy or something like that and give him some training they can say like okay here's a 10 day pass to ranked matchmaking or something like that yeah, you know whatever and it'd be nice too it's like after you finish the match if they had an option you could download it you take that replay with your voice on it you shove it away in a folder and then that way if you want to apply for something down the line you're like here's my folder of replays have you know free will look over them whatever so it's nice. And it puts you on that platform where you could have those 300 viewers or whatever as opposed yeah. to just streaming on your lonely indie streaming page where no one ever gets to come by, you know? Yeah, and it yeah. gives you practice. Like, I'm not yeah. someone who can cast very well yet. I'm yeah. a good bullshitter. I'm great at that. But Mason, between Mason and I, he's a better caster than I am. And it gives you an opportunity to practice something where it's not just you pulling up a replay and then doing it and then putting it on YouTube and then getting, you know, content ID flagged and shit like that. Which maybe we'll talk about that before the end of the show because that's an interesting topic. Do you guys listen to the uh, content ID stuff? Or are you um, all just staring not particularly. At me, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll talk about that because I think it's important for us. Um, <laughs> Go for it. But it's, I think it's important. 
Now, the content ID, I'll explain it to you. Have you guys been keeping up with this? Probably not. Um, I have no idea like, what you, you're talking YouTube about. YouTube videos get taken down. Oh, okay. They get flagged. They I know get what you're talking about for, like, okay. like, pieces of, like, they get pieces of, like, music in the background or something. And it's an algorithm that checks these videos, like, automatically for the affiliates of these affiliate programs. And what happens is, like, for example, right, you guys watching the live stream, congratulations. You may be the only ones that can watch it other than on Twitch servers because what could happen is we put our video up there. Our theme song, all right, flags it, and now it's still up there. But if we were making money off it, what happens is whoever flagged it gets the money for the actual video. They get all the money Real. for it until you critis until you yeah. actually, um, what's I'm looking for? Con until like you actually dispute hmm? it or something. Dispute it, correct. Or whatever. You have to dispute it, and then it goes through that process, and the, and then it. What happens it's is a like clusterfuck. It's so it, bad. yeah. What happens is it gets sent to them. The people that actually you know quote unquote disputed it uh, gets sent to the person that actually said it was a copyright claim, and then okay, so like people like Ubisoft and all that have had things flagged in their name that they didn't give a shit about that they have to verify. And if you have three, I believe it is failed disputes, your channel is destroyed basically. It gets, what? Right. That so is if, if Purge, if Purge oh right, gets flagged, he has to decide what he wants to actually flag and not flag, right? He doesn't have any now, if I'm going to understand. But people yeah, he's, like... Um, he's very good about not doing anything on this video. Yeah, like Angry Joe or all these other YouTube people who Dude, are now I basically Angry Joe video. That was... 75 people, right? 75 videos are flagged. If he fails on three of those he flags, then his channel can be shut down. It's absolute shit. And I almost feel like Twitch... Twitch is, in sh is sometimes shit, sometimes isn't. But we need something that actually caters towards us gamers because right now, YouTube doesn't give a shit about gaming because it's a small subsector of their actual, you know, yeah. viewers. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, a place like Twitch is a haven for gamers. Now, Twitch has a lot of problems right now. I mean, it's good, but it still has a lot of problems. And I think it needs to go the way of helping support the actual people that are streaming as like YouTube does, but that's that's on VODs and all that. But that's a big topic for another thing. But yeah, it's just something we need to keep shitty. an eye on. It's, it's just shitty. it's not so much about Dota two, but it's something we need to know about. Kind of like those things where they try to censor the internet, that yeah. kind of thing. If it's something you, watch, if know you about. guys, yeah, if you guys, maybe we'll put a link to the Angry Joe video in the show notes or something. The Angry Joe video is really good. Uh, I feel really like you just feel bad for him when you watch. Yeah, it. I yeah. haven't seen it myself. It's I'll have like, to take a look at it. Cause it's just what such I'll, a it's such a cluster of a. I'll try to link it here real fast um, oh in the God. chat, but that's basically the big part about it that you guys need to understand. Yeah. That's so. Bad. But. Now, the final topic of. Before we move to the final topic, I want to go no. ahead. And this is my time. I'm sorry, but I will need to sign off. My uh, shuttle's going to be coming. I got to go to the airport, go to California, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for having me on here. This is fun. It's been nice to do this. It was. A pleasure. I'm happy to be back whenever. You guys are great. Uh, I will bring my some of my equipment with me in case there's boring downtime. It is just going to be me and some of the family. I'll still be probably casting in game or whatever. You can find me over at twitch.tv slash coddleguy. Shameless plug incoming. And it. Twitter at coddleguy as well. I want to thank you guys once again for having me on here, but I will have to bid adieu. See you Thanks later. For Thanks for Take coming. Take care. Thank Thanks you guys. Come, man. Bye. Appreciate have it. a flight. All right. Sorry for the momentary fucking of the overlays, which are now unfucked because I planned ahead. Excellent. Look at that. It looks like we know what we're doing. Oh, my, oh God. my God. Perfect. That's, that's All right. Let's move on to the last topic. I, I'm a big fan of this one. I am. Uh, I have some opinions. That's the let's do it. it guys. Let's get some opinions. I have some opinions. All right. Well, let's. let's wanna, do we want to go? Okay. Talk. We'll. I'll talk about it after. We'll just go. All right. Let's talk about the clusterfuck we have. Nick. Gosu Awards 2013, they're basically getting a poll up and saying, who do you think is the X best player, X team, whatever. So the first one we're going to talk about here is the best Dota team of the year. All right, so can we just like each go around and say our vote? Yeah, let's, let's do give, that. Let's and then if the there's like first. some wild if there's some wild discrepancies, then we can argue. Well, let's, give the, let's give the five. Alliance, Navi, DK, Fnatic, and LGD.CN. Go for it, Greg. Alliance. All right. Mason. Alliance. I'm a big Navi fanboy, but I'm gonna have to say Alliance. All right. Well, that they won TI surprise. three. I think you have to give it to them. Yeah. I mean, they might be performing a little bit worse right now, but they're still a really good team. Top yeah, top I, tier team. I th I think you have to give that to them. Yeah. 
At least for now. At least for now, yeah. Until yeah. they really, if they really shit the bed, then. So most improved team of 2013, we have VC Gaming, Speed Gaming, Fnatic, Sigma International, and First Departure. Greg. Speed. Easy. Yeah. Mason. Vici. I'm okay with that one also. I'm, I'm with Speed. I'm with Greg Dude, on this one. Speed will forever have a fucking place in my heart. I love that team. They are so impressive. Seeing them on LAN was amazing. Uh, that was like... The games against DK were unbelievable. They played so well, I couldn't even believe it. On the other hand, Vici, I can also totally, totally sympathize. I, They're playing I, unbelievably right now. I'm going to say Vici because it is supposed to be the most improved team. And while I think you could possibly call speed like the best new team although they've you well, know they sort of had some this kind. i like, mean that's true yeah. but like i think that i i want to say that vici is uh, they're going to be my most improved bet they were pretty good when they started off as that sort of you know all-star pub star team then they took a big hit and now they've got some roster changes and they're taking games off the best in the east so yeah, uh yeah. watch out for vici <laughs> yeah they're real good they won uh ems so you know that's the thing I agree. Now, this one, all right? Oh, God. <laughs> this, one's, this one's tough. I mean, I look at this list, and I'm popping an antidepressant just thinking about it. Right? <laughs> we got the most disappointing team in 2013. This is a tough one, guys. Ready? LGD International, uh, which is fuck. probably disbanding, and Black is just sitting on a road somewhere with his thumb in the air. Um Virtus Pro, and I think we're talking about the oh, dream team Virtus Pro the here. Fucking oh, dream team. God. Rising Stars. They're someone's dream. Invasion MUFC and the defunct Zenith. Pretty much all these teams are defunct God, except for this, this, this is the most depressing list of Dota teams <laughs> for me, I have ever seen. For me, I have to say it is definitely LGDN. Uh that was a disaster and a fucking half. Between like Last year they didn't even. Like, last year they played okay when their aggressive trilands were really good for like a little bit, and then they just were not good for a while. And this year the whole Sayuri thing, like oh god, they're just Mason. most disappointing on the moral front and on the Dota front. Mason, I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Hypothetical question. Your girlfriend tells you she's leaving you. Okay. Which is more depressing, that <laughs> or looking at this list? This, looking at this list of teams hurts my heart more. <laughs> oh All right, that's what God. I thought. Good oh, job. God. I'm proud of you. Any other, any other idea and decision would have been wrong. So <laughs> Dota, Dota first. Dota first. I'd say my most disappointing team of 2013 is Virtus fucking Pro. <laughs> I had so much hope for this team when they announced that roster. I thought that these guys were going to stomp the shit out of the CIS and just take over the world. And they blew horse cock. If we were any good at editing, we would take the episode where we talked about this <laughs> and how happy we were and just put in the background over us just drinking heavily. Okay? <laughs> I, I mean, should do that. Was, oh, my God. I can't, I can't even, I don't even I can't know. fathom how a team of those players it's did so, bad. so badly. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, ah. Oh. Fuck, man. I don't know. Um, also, I would not recommend letting your girlfriend hear this episode. <laughs> so, you she, know. She doesn't listen to this. <laughs> and that was famous last words. Famous <laughs> last words. Mason won't be here next week, guys. <laughs> All, right, All right. What's yours, Dart? What's yours? Um, You know what? I got to go with Virtus Pro. All I right. mean, the amount I'm of okay suckage. <laughs> The amount of suckage and disappointment that came from this is like uh, a lonely Christmas. It really is. I mean, let's give a, a a special nomination to MUFC for making it to TI three and not winning a game. And, oh, yeah. and and I felt so bad for Winter. I mean, uh, it's okay. I, I can just picture him drinking, going, "Oh, I'm in trouble." You know? <laughs> um, All right. The best carry of 2013. Ooh, Loda, uh, a Vost, burning. How an era? No black. What? Okay. This is a this is a really this hard is one real hard. I think I would have to say burning. Burning like, despite DK not really winning still, burning is unbelievably impressive. Burning like 
The biggest thing, like, he's good as a carry. He can farm very well. He's extremely strong in lane. Uh, like, the mid long druid versus RTZ OD was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's super talented, extremely impressive. I, I think it's, for me, it's probably burning. Mason. Oh, Jesus. This is such a hard choice. Um, oh, God. I'm going to say burning because I think that he has shown the most versatility of any carry player. Mm-hmm. As far as, you know, the old DK, when you think of, you know, for protect burning, it was, you know, rice forever. You know, that's kind of what happened at, at TI3. You know, he had <clears throat> with, his, with his lone druid game, like just... I think, like, the most last hits ever in the longest game ever. It's just, like, you can't compete with this man when it comes to farming. But with the new DK roster as well, he's proven that he can do more than just rice. He's proven that he can play, you know, mid-game carries and really get involved in fight rather than just rice for 45 minutes. Yeah. And while I think that all Loda of the others... Good, I think, as well. Yeah, and while all of the others, you know, Loda, Havost, Tau, and Era are all fantastic as well. Like, I, I, I'm going to give it to Burning, but just by a little, little bit. Yeah. I, I like Burning as well, I'll be honest. I think he's one of the more versatile carries out there. I feel like Loda does an amazing job of what he does. It's just that's kind of what he does. I don't think, I don't think Loda's very versatile in, in how he plays right now. It's not saying he can't be. It's just how he plays at the moment. So if we're talking about best carry, we're trying to do something big. But the problem is it's kind of a hard decision. I don't think Havost really would be on my list. I mean, he does a good job as well, but I definitely think Burning, followed by Loda, if I could do a second person. Yeah, I'll agree with that. And then the next one is most improved player of 2013, which we have EGM, FY. Whoa, whoa, we skipped, we skipked a couple categories here. Well, yeah, because I did didn't you want know? to sit. I I did not want to spend the entire like. All right, well, we need. I think we need to do best solo mid. Come on. Best oh, solo mid. Okay, hold on. Let give me... us a list. Give me the list. Hold on. All right, best solo mid. There's like twenty of these things, so I don't want I, to. Go was, I mean, yeah, but I think this one's important. Our options are Mushi, S4, Mu, Dendi, and Hani. Mm. Oh shit! For me, it is. Uh, as far as a team-oriented mid, it is S4 by far, not close. Uh, in terms of player skill, like pure, if I was picking someone to plan my team, it would be uh, it would be RTZ, who's only an honorable mention on this list, but RTZ, kid's amazing. Boy, NA Dota. The honorable mentions are right. Super RTZ Resolution and Sing Sing. <laughs> Which are all pretty all good honorable mentions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. Um, Mason. Wow, this is really hard. Um, I think if I wanted to pick a player to be on my team that does more than that is more than just a good solo mid, I would pick Mushi because he can just do so much. If I was going to pick somebody specifically to play solo mid, I actually think I would also give it to RTZ, though he's an awkward yeah. mention. If I have to pick somebody from the list, though, I'm going to pick... Ooh. I'm going to pick S4. Great so choice. S4 for solo mid from the list, RTZ in reality, and Mushi if I'm picking someone thinking more of a whole team lineup. I'm thinking, I'm thinking S4 as well, and I think Arteezy would be an amazing. He's an amazing player, but if we're looking at the 2013, as in like yeah, yeah, for 2013 games, I think he is not. He's not. You know now 2014. If he continues oh, he's doing what he's doing, he's gonna he be. would be on there. He definitely would. But if we're trying to do like the list of who's on there right now, it's it's S4. I love Denny to death, but you know I think he hasn't really. Broken out recently and I mean, he plays things, usually. You know? I mean, games, he's amazing, but the games that he smashes, his team's throwing, so it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think let's let's lump all the sports in one category. It's definitely worth talking about, though. Best sport of 2013: No Tail, Fy, Puppy, EGM, Net, Aki, Karaoke, Extinct, 
Vance Core and Banana. For me, oh god, this is like the hardest choice. For me, it's probably probably Aki or EGM. I don't think I can choose between them though. Probably, I... probably Aki. I'm going to say it's probably for me also between Ake and EGM, but I definitely want to give a shout out to Vanscore because that guy is fucking good at this game. <laughs> he is probably one of the best Ruby players that I've ever seen. Vanscore is real good. I think, but, uh, I yeah. think, I, I, so these are technically different voting categories. EGM and Aki would definitely be my two picks. Not close. Yeah, I, I would probably pick EGM and Ake if I had to pick my one and two, but Vanscore is high up on my list too. EGM and Aki. Definitely for me as well. All right. We can continue with your regularly yeah. scheduled programming. <clears throat> so we're going back to the list now? Back to the list, yeah. Back to, the, yeah. All right. back to more of them. <laughs> so did we do most improved player? Yeah. No, we did. We left off. Okay. Most improved player of 2013. EGM, FY, Admiral Bulldog, Avost, and Miracle. Greg. Miracle. But he's only made a splash uh, recently. He outfarmed a 10k disadvantage on a Naga Siren. That guy. Dude, we're talking about 2013, not the end of it's 2013. It's still 2013. Yeah, but he's improved to the point where he can do that. <clears throat> is amazing. EGM would be my more consistently improving answer. Although the thing is, I feel like he has played. He played better at TI3 than he has played recently. Uh, only because I think his play is getting a little bit cocky, uh, and he pays for it occasionally. But uh, yeah. EGM has also gotten... I mean, he was already good, though. That's the thing. Like, yeah, see, this is where the most improved categories kind of hit me because a lot of these aren't people who were, like, bad. poor. Like, yeah. people who I would consider for a most improved category are ones Same who started thing. off on really mediocre teams or didn't really start off for much and then got big. I think Sing Sing would be my actual most improved player. He's been amazing all the time. No, 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 but he was not nearly as good in competitive play than he has been recently. I, I will definitely say Sing Sing because I remember kind of, I mean, it wasn't his first downing, but the first one that I really got to see of him play competitively was in Q-Pad. And so, you know, they kind of hit with a bit of a splash at first. Um, you know, they picked Kunkka in their first series and did pretty well. But, I mean, God knows we all know how Q-Pad went. And so... I, I would give it. I would give it to Sing Sing as well yeah, because I think my, he's shown an amazing skill level on speed gaming. His Marana is just absolutely stupid. Shoot arrow, hit arrow, win game. For me, I mean, I think EGM is first, but I'll be honest. I think I think some respect needs to be given to Admiral Bulldog. His hero pool has increased yeah, a fair amount yeah. this year. He's playing Bristleback that, now. That's that's kind of hard for me. It's a hard one. I I kind of to tie. EGM and Admiral Bulldog, because he went from this guy who was just playing Lone Druid and then Nature's Prophet to a whole bunch of other other heroes. Can you imagine, like, Dendi, like, finding Admiral Bulldog and not knowing, like, in a year or whatever time he'd be facing him at the International? Yeah. 2013? That's crazy. He'd be his biggest adversary. That's an awesome story. That's pretty amazing. I think that, I think that storyline would be hyped a whole lot more yeah. at TI3. I think it's a good good story, good drama, but... That's my take on it. Um, this is this is one I really don't like because I feel like I don't oh. like, you know, like this this next one. Oh, it's a, we're gonna talk about this one. I I don't really like the idea of putting people in lists like this because I think they each have their good All things right, and bad things. It, but get to it. Come on. Best English caster 2013. Uh, the list is Toby Wan, LD Draskel. AC, Baskep, Shiver, Merlini, Luminous, Gods, Winner, and Lysander, Zenora. Alright, first of all, rest You're not in on peace. there. Oh yeah, well, I don't know. Nah, what the fuck? Rest in the peace, heck? Mott and Capitalist, and yeah, Paul really, Rizari, huh? who all deserve a spot in that list if Lysander and Basekip are yep. on there. Uh, so that's no, no shots at Lysander or Basekip. They both casted a fair amount this year, but Mott has casted a shitload for MLG. Uh... You know, Zeri recently has started casting an absurd amount. Um, Coddle guy's fucking missing. Dude, Capitalist is the, main, the second main caster at JD now. Um, which, I, I mean, I understand that one a little more because he hasn't really casted since TI3 qualifiers. I mean, an, I, already, I already gave all the GG net people shit about this list. Um, but <laughs> when it comes down to my opinion, it's, uh, it's Merlini. Really okay, I, I'm gonna split this up. Actually, no, I won't. Not allowed. I, 
No. Nope. No. Yeah, I'm splitting this up. Favorite. I'm I'm splitting this up. All right. Well, I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll give. Okay. Definitely. You know what? I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you my favorite, and then we can split it up. Okay. And it's gonna be boring because I'm also gonna agree and say Merlini. Dude, Merlini, so good. All right. And, now, uh, all right, Derek, give Jared, us your you overall, give us our favorite, and then we'll we'll do whatever the hell Mason wants to do. I gotta say. I think you're going to disagree with me on this, but I think Toby. That's fine. And that's not something I normally say, but Toby has like really come a long way in terms of how he's been doing things. Um, he's been going a long way in terms of his knowledge and his casting. And I think JD's been in a big slump, but I kind of feel like they're going to go a little bit further than they have in the next, we'll say, six months, especially with Capitalist and all that. I think, I think Toby's improved quite a bit. But Merlini is definitely amazing at the same time. Uh, you want to break it up, Mason? Yeah, the way I want to split this is, is into like main casters and co-casters because I think sort of lumping them together is they, they don't serve the same purpose. So I almost want to say like I want one of these lists to be like Toby, LD, AC, Sheever, and like Basekip and Lysander, and then the other one to be like Draskal, Merlini, Luminous Gods, and Winter. Because I think I, they're sort of more of like the like the, the co-casting side of it rather than, you know, the main play-by-plays. I almost wanted to be like best established caster 2013 and best new caster 2013. So people like Zayori, Baskip, um, Lysander, you know, et cetera, et cetera, Mott yeah. would have a list to be in, like the up-and-comers. I feel like that should have been added into this. And if it isn't, Greg, get on it. Tell GG now that they have to do that. <laughs> There's no, there's so, no, if it All right, but with my split up, with your split up, I would choose no one for main caster because I hate listening to main casters. I literally will mute them uh, and still pick Merlini. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Merlini is my favorite co caster, and I'm going to give LD my favorite main caster. I love LD too. It's such a hard. I don't like making these kind of decisions. It's like, I love all my children. Oh my God. So like, you know? I love oh, Vomit, sorry. It's all right. Mouth. Stop looking at your webcam. <laughs> Stop that from happening. Now, the next list. Personality of the year, 2013. Bruno, Cyborg Matt, Perry and Flax, Too Good, and Wickham. Here's my problem. Cyborg why Matt, am I, not close. Why am I not on that list? I'm pissed For off. For many good reasons. Cyborg Matt, not close. None of them good. Cyborg Matt? Not close. That guy it. contributes an amazing amount to the community. He He's does. He's super nice. He does so much uh, shit. But I feel like he and he and Wickram don't really fit into the rest of this list. Like half of them are personalities, and then they're more of like community involvement. Yeah. All right. So if if this oh, is yeah. community involvement, I'll give it to Cyborg Matt hands down. If this is like personalities, but like if you I would think saying, like a okay. television personality. The way I, I look at personality now. is like if I had to make one of these people at an event to be at an event that I'm at or something for any reason, it would just be Cyborg Matt, that guy. I would say Bruno. That's fine. I not that say, I not that I don't love you, Matt. <laughs> what I think what I think personality of the year is like someone you would have like hosting the show. Yeah, that's exactly that's how I think. I think personality is. All right, well, I, then I, say, I would choose too good in that in that. In that I, two GD is definitely up there. Bruno for the suits. That though. guy's fucking. He's a god. I think. I think. I would say it's a tie. I feel like too good in Perian. If we're talking about people, I want to host a show. If we're talking about. Um, community personalities, I would definitely say <sighs> I mean, Cyborg does a ton but Wickham never fucking sleeps. Whatever. It's true. He he's, really he's, doesn't. I mean, but, but, he doesn't, but, but he doesn't do, doesn't, but I would say he I doesn't mean, do That doesn't cut it. He, he, fi he finds a lot of news and posts it, which is great. It, but I think, so I think Cyborg Matt would actually come out ahead. Just All because right. Ky Cyborg Matt is doing a lot of active work, and and Wickham like you know puts images together to show off new things, and that's great. But I think his stuff is more like a news deliverer versus Cyborg tearing things apart, yeah. contribute contributing. And Cyborg Matt takes so much shit he doesn't deserve. It's not even funny. Yeah. Which all right, fair enough. Let's thing. finish it up. We're running. We're running long as hell here. Let's finish. That's it up. all right. It's like a ten minutes late. It's not that bad. Best Dota two mem. All right, this mem? is mem. Did you just say mem? mem? I always say mem. It's meme. Is that a meme? meme? I know it says Mongoloid. meme, but oh my it's, God. Like, it's like it's like it's like Dota two meme. It's like me. It's like melee and melee. I always say right, melee whatever, too. Whatever. Whatever. I know the actual one. All right. So, what's your favorite Dota mem? <laughs> well, we got. 
<laughs> Give Dyer time with the little, little with the, face there. The smashy guy. Yeah. yeah. We got Kappa, Volvo Disband, 320, and Xbox Avost. Four. With, uh, <laughs> four. Four. I got to say, Give Dyer tide, man. I mean, it cans down. I mean, Give I know Kappa's a. Not Kappa's Kappa's a it's Kappa's gotta a be thing. Give Tire Tide. <laughs> Nothing Kappa's... has created a fucking shitstorm like Give Tire Tide has, so you know that just wins. And, Kappa... and nothing, nothing has more. I, you got to put it this way: like, th- just the Give Dire Tide guy is just so multifaceted now. Like, it can right. be used for so many things. <laughs> he spawns he's, entire yeah, he's, family. He's gone. He's reached enlightenment. He's gone above and beyond <laughs> the meme he's... level. <laughs> He punch is Siddhartha. No? Like punch Dire Tide. Give oh my God. P- P- punch him. All right, where's where's punch him on this list? Punch him on this list. <laughs> oh my God, that <laughs> was give, fantastic. Give Dire Tide is definitely the winner. I mean, Cap is just internal for Twitch. It has no long reaching effects. I mean, children in Africa may know about Give Dota. <laughs> uh, give Dire Tide versus Kappa. What? I mean, we took over a fucking car company for a bit. <laughs> like, <laughs> man. It's gonna be on. It's gonna be a bumper sticker on every Volvo oh, vehicle God. next year, 2014. <laughs> you haven't heard it. I'm breaking the news. Oh Jesus! Hope I don't get in trouble. And all I right. think that's it. We have. That's, that's all we have. Yeah, that's right? all we got. Let's wrap it up. All right, Greg. What kind of shoutouts do you have? Uh, shout out to Cyberpower PC. Uh, if you need a new computer, I would highly recommend checking theirs out. If you <laughs> do not want to build it yourself. The one that I have provided by them is uh, amazing, to say the least. We're all jelly. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at WhatIsHipTV. It's right below my name here or something. I don't know. I can't really point right now, but somewhere around there. Um, and that's, you know, I have a short list this week. That's it. That's it. Mason, any shout-outs? Uh, big shout-out to Coddle Guy for joining us this week. It was great to have him and his beard on. Uh, always <laughs> shout-outs to CyberPower PC for making the show happen. And thank you to everybody who joined us on the live stream today. It was a lot of fun being able to do this officially for the first time. And uh, to you guys who want audio only and all our fans there, uh, thank you as well. And don't worry, we will continue to put it out in podcast form. Yep. And uh, finally, shout-out to Darius, who had his birthday weekend this weekend. Oh, yeah. He's How old are you? Like How 63, old are you? 64. Oh my god. 32. When I'm you were my old. age, when you were my age, yeah. I was 10 years old. That's right. You are was, goddamn old. I was way cooler at your age too. And I'm <laughs> still you, cooler. At when you were my age, I was 6. You know, yep. here's a funny story. I'll end this with a story. Wow, we have a big spread. We have a big spread. All right, what's well, the story? I'm going to finish with a story. Mason and I are from the same hometown, hometown. What happened was we was like Hey, I got this new guy who's supposed to be writing for the show, uh, writing for the website. <laughs> yeah, waiting for the writing for the website. Uh, <laughs> Funny. Hate all of you. So it. he's like, he comes in. I'm like, hey, how's it going, Mason? It's like, good. I'm like, where are you from? It's like, oh, North Attleboro. I'm like, dude, I'm from North Attleboro. So it was a very geeky moment. Now as for shoutouts, and then we fucked. That's right. <laughs> now kiss. Greg watched. Wow. He he wanted to join in, but we were shot him time. Uh, as for shout outs, shout outs to Cyberpower PC as always. I'm going to give a shout out to Action Slacks, Sir Action Slacks, who's been watching this entire time. He's the guy that does the voices on the, uh, he does those voices for Dota 2 videos. So funny. Um, He's pretty good. We've been playing with him recently a lot. So shout out to him. You can always follow us on our respective Twitter handles. I'm at Darith. Really happy about this. I'm sorry for like the, extra people that have shown up at the very end of the show but you know there's always next week which we'll be doing hopefully around the same time we're working on the timing because we might have a very special guest joining us and so depending on them we might be switching our timing around yes but thank you everybody for joining us do we want to do see- the uh oh yes we yes we have we have a giveaway all right oh, so here's away. how the giveaway is going to work guys uh you're i'm going to roll the dice as long as this plugin works, which for the moment it is not working. Nice job. Uh, which is a we gift came thing. Prepared. Oh my god. It was working two seconds ago and then I like refreshed it and it fucked. <sighs> Alright, this might turn into a Twitter giveaway if this is broken. There is no one to choose you from. You done fucked it up. I th- you know, I really did. Chat. List. We- spam filter. What's going on here? It's broken now. God damn it. 
All right, well, we'll, we'll give it a second. But that's the end of the show yeah. this week. Um, thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, if you're on the Twitch stream, don't leave, because we are going to give away a free-to-play poster right now. If you're on the podcast, next week, tune in. Maybe I'll give away some items or something at the end of the show. Uh, no, that's, that's sale, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, though. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you.